Oh, there's some hype. There's some hype. Now I'm seeing the hype. Okay, good. This is not War Planets. Just to let you know. Uh, I always like to circle back when I'm able to access something that I've talked about before that I didn't quite get to. So when I was doing the Micro Machines for Star Trek the other day, I was talking about a couple of the other very small um, properties that Micro Machines tackled as well. And one of them was, does anyone know what this is? I mentioned it at that time, so. Warplanets are coming. Hold on. I just want to look at this thing real quick. Uh, so this is, well, the shape isn't exactly right, but they had to do it for the toy. Yes, this is Titan AE. This is the actual, I think it's the vessel called the Titan. Um, it was. It's a really interesting pack, the way they did this. Again, really flat. But what this does is, let me see if I remember how to do it. So it opens up, and you get this entire playset. I love toys like this. Um, you have Polly Pockets were like this. Uh, what was the what was the boy Max something? Mighty Max. Anyway, so it has like a bunch of little moving things you can attach to stuff. You could land that little micro machine spaceship here on the little landing pad. Um, it has some action features on the other side. Oh, this turns into a little. Thing where people could stand so yeah pretty cool looks decent enough closed up as a as a ship i actually kind of like that it has a flat back so i can put it all the way at the back of a shelf against a wall and it doesn't look too out of place over on this side there's some battle damage comes apart there's a projectile firing gun you can swing out so it had some cool stuff to it And that's that. Let's see if I can get it back together. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, that's a good sound. So yeah, Titan AE. Uh, the only thing I haven't shown is I do have a gigantic action figure scale. Uh, what were they called? Dredge, I think, were the bad guys. I have a... Like I said, I have an action figure scale dredge fighter. You can put a figure in the cockpit. I think you could like grab another one in the back and had projectiles at the front. Um, can't quite get to that one, but I do have that. That's the only other thing that I have from Titan AE, which is a movie that I liked. Let me put this somewhere. But again, that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about... Yeah, that, that sounds familiar. I think maybe, maybe, I think they may have spelled it D-R-E-J or something to be, you know, hip and cool. All right, so now we're going to go back, back in time, cast your minds back with me to the late 90s. A glorious time. Animation was changing. We get computer-made animation on TV. And there's a little company up in Canada, well, up relative to me at least, <laughs> called Mainframe Studios. Mainframe Studios would become pretty much an instant hit. One second. Okay. In 1994... The company came out with the show, a little-known show you might have heard of, called Reboot. Now, again, I didn't actually watch Reboot. I, a lot of my friends and people I know did, so I don't have much to say about that. But it did definitely pave the way, because after Reboot came from the same company, Beast Wars, which again, very popular. Another show that I didn't really watch, but that's fine. So it was Reboot, started in ninety four. Beast Wars started in 96, and then in 1998 came Shadow Raiders slash War Planets. Now, it depends, the name depends on what part of the world you're from. Look, I'm sorry, I was a little bit older at that point. I mean, 94, I was, I was almost done with high school in 94. 
And I was, you know, I was busy with other stuff. Beast Wars started in 96. That's the year I graduated high school. I was, I don't know. Anyway. So, 1998. Mainframe Studios gets a, gets a hold of people over at a toy company called Trendmasters. And Trendmasters had a toy line. Boom. And they were like, hey, this could be this could be a good cartoon based on the toy line. That's how a lot of these things go. So they took a chance, made a cartoon. Now, in here in the United States, where we peddle all sorts of violent things to children, it was called War Planets. Uh, in many other countries, you're not allowed to have war in the title of things that are marketed to children. So it became known as Shadow Raiders. Same thing. So the original toys were these. So this is Planet Bone. So a lot of the main line were these these planets, okay? And they have they each had a totally different style. Uh, this one has these long, bendy tentacles, which is pretty cool. Now what's inside? So the whole gimmick to this was that these are planets full of armies. And they have, so there are little decorative parts that you can open up. Some stickers and artwork inside. Looks kind of cool. But then here we go. So the top un lifts up to unlock. Let me make sure I do this the right way. And out is going to come spilling just an epic ton of stuff. And one of the gimmicks was that all of this stuff could, well, a lot of it could be mounted on the inside of the planet walls, which was neat. So you could have it open as a display. This one, because the tentacles makes it a little bit wobbly. So what do we got? Well, Planet Bone has, they pretty much all have some little figures. So there's solid plastic pieces. They're slightly painted. They look okay. They stand up on their own, which is good. Then they have these little bit more advanced figures. They're actually a couple pieces of plastic. Oh, maybe we can get a detail in there. And these are, like I said, these are slightly posable. You can move the arms up and down. Worm. Big enough where you could stick a figure in its mouth. Projectile cannon. A cool tank. I love this tank. Obviously, it blends in with the with the scenery. Uh, this creature thing that's also a projectile launcher, and then just a variety of other stuff. So this was the basic idea, right? You'd get a planet, you get a bunch of crap with it. You could build your little armies, have them fight, have the planets interact. There were other pieces that could attach to these holes and link up planets or um, reinforce a planet, all sorts of things like that. So again, this was made by a company called Trendmaster. Trendmaster is no longer around. Uh, it's been gone for a while. And I have an interesting history with Trendmaster and this toy line specifically. So I, I watched War Planets when it was on TV. And I was immediately hooked. I thought it was great. Um, I got all the DVDs later. Unfortunately, I can't find them. I know I have them, but I can't find it. And like I said, I, I, I honestly think it's a really good show. Really well written. Characters are great. So it's based on this toy line. Now, what you find in the show looks almost nothing like this toy line. Because this toy line came first. And then they basically they sold the rights to the names and the overall concept to... Or they, they commissioned Mainframe, however it works. But um, Mainframe just took the basic ideas and the some of the names and then made their own stuff. So in the show, there is a planet bone. Um, they have troops. They have war machines and things. 
None of it really looks like any of this. The, the creatures do not look like these creatures at all. So in some cases, there'll be things that are more or less um, related to this in the, in the later stuff. Now, we will get to, once the show was out, Trendmasters did do some action figures specifically based on the show. So we will get to that. Uh, yes, Rabid Wombat. Just a minor is the most most used line in the show. Yeah, it makes a ghost. Yeah, and it's also interesting that this toy line, I remember seeing it in, at the time I remember seeing it, especially in KB Toys, but I don't remember it being super popular. But apparently it was popular enough in the U.S. and Canada for them to, to make the, the TV show. Who knew? Uh, okay, so before I get to the next thing, I just want to say, so I had a pretty large collection of War Planets toys, and a long time ago I had a website where I took where I had pictures of all my toys in my displays, and apparently I did a good enough job labeling everything that my stuff would always come up in Google image searches for a bunch of different toy things. So I got a message one day from somebody who said, oh, I found your War Planets Shadow Raider stuff on display online. And he said, I don't, I, I've, I'm, I've told some of this story before. So this guy let me know that he was, he wasn't a collector specifically of this toy line, but instead the company that made this, Trendmasters. So this guy, this toy collector, he collected specifically Trendmasters prototypes. Now, this is kind of a crazy thing because toy prototypes. Now, again, if you go back, there's a lot of, you'll see a lot of like on eBay, you'll see Star Wars action figure prototypes. And it's like, you know, it's like a, a Boba Fett toy that's all pink or something. Those aren't really prototypes. That's a different, those are like test shots. That's It's a different kind of thing. But toy prototypes are very, very rare. You can't get access to them easily as a civilian. But this guy somehow was able to amass a huge collection of prototypes. Um, at one point, at least, he was like actually hanging out outside their offices and digging through their trash cans and stuff like that. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend that. But <laughs> yeah, oh my god, Rabbit Wombat. Super specific, but that, that, was, that was his jam. So he amassed things from a bunch of different toy lines just because it was all made by the same company. Um, and he collected every catalog they ever had so he could show you. I mean, this guy knew his Trendmasters more than anybody I ever knew. He could ident <coughs> I could identify, <coughs> excuse me, like, oh, that Godzilla toy has three toes. That means it was the prototype in 1992 before the actual figure came out, which had four toes. And this different scale pattern, like he knew everything. So anyway, he contacted me out of the blue saying, hey, you know, I have all this Shadow Raiders stuff. I see you're a fan. And so we, we conversed over the years. I would get random emails from him from time to time. Um, and then at some point he sent me a bunch of stuff, extras that he had, both mainly production toys, but a couple of prototype things. And when I was getting ready for this stream today... I pulled out my War Planet stuff that was in a display case and a couple of things that I have around. And then there was a box that I knew had a bunch of War Planet stuff. But when I opened it up today to show you, I realized that this is all the stuff that I got from this guy. And I don't know where the rest of my War Planet's toys are. <laughs> and it's kind of freaking me out because I don't have that many boxes that are totally unopened or labeled. And it's, it's a little worrisome. But anyway, I have more things to look at. I just wanted to share that story. So these are two different versions of Planet Rock. You can see that they are the same sculpt. This is the way it looked in the show. Uh, I don't know if this was just a paint variant. But essentially, it's the same kind of idea. It's got opening parts where there are stickers. So it looks like, you know, the interior of the planet. But then the cool thing, of course, is you pull up. Oh, and some of them actually have hatches that open all the way to the interior. So this one is empty, but so you pull this up 
and it opens. Again, lots of little attachment points for all the stuff that comes with it. And Rock was cool because it had, yeah, these really tough dudes, like minor dudes. So actually, the in the cartoon, the miners from Planet Rock actually did look like look like this, which again, I will show you in just in just a few moments. So you get a bunch of little dudes, uh, a pretty cool tank thing. A lot of these had projectile launchers. Um, I don't know if any of the springs in here are still good enough to shoot, but uh, but yeah, so pretty neat. I don't know. I don't think there's anything in this one either. And they would actually use, so in the show, uh, they took this this spheroid design and this became one of the battle moons. So they're not only planets that are fighting, there are also moons. Yeah, so same thing on the inside. So the basic premise of the show is that there's a star system called the Cluster. There are four planets there. Planet Bone, Planet uh, Ice, Planet Fire, and Planet... I, I know they're around here somewhere. Well, there was a box over there. That's this. That's what I'm... No, 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 no. On this side of that. It was right on the ground right there. But that's... But again, that's... This isn't... Oh, okay. something on top that keeps you from knowing that that's what they are. I just saw them. I was like, oh, look, what kind of <laughs> Rock, thank you, everybody. Sorry, we were... Uh, Chris is trying to help me figure out, remember where the where the actual... Where my actual planets are. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, no, they have to be here somewhere. Um, yes. So there are four planets in the, in the cluster. And one day... Dun, dun, dun. The beast planet comes. Or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the beast planet. And the beast planet is a super gigantic planet. And it starts preying upon the cluster of heroic, well, essentially heroic planets. I don't know how to organize this stuff. I think I'm just going to put them back in the bag. Uh, and then, of course, the, the inhabitants of the cluster must work together to defend themselves against the evil beast planet. Evil, misunderstood, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, Unicron-sized planet. Uh, it has similarities to Unicron. I'll show you that in just a moment. But what was cool is that each planet had a totally different look, totally different colors, very unique style and character design, and it was, it was great. Um, actually, yes, and they all hate each other, and they have grudges dating back for generations, so they have to get over them. Uh, here, you want to see the beast planet? So I think I, <laughs> you're not going to be able to see it well, because it's huge. And if I move the camera far enough away to really see this, then you wouldn't be able to see all the little stuff so well. So it came, it's a gigantic... I mean, it's almost a sphere. It's mostly spherical. I know you can't really see that much of it, but um, it has a couple of cool features. It opens, and inside is a gigantic claw that extends, and then, so this planet literally can eat one of the smaller planets. So it grabs it in the claw, it sucks it back in, uh, there used to be a light down at the bottom that no longer works, but you get a sense of the size of this thing. Uh, there are two side panels that flip out and have a whole bunch of uh, projectile blasters in them. The back, let me see if I can figure out how this worked. So this thing was just like a little flying something, and then... The whole back part opens and extends. And then essentially in here it's a whole battle playset. So yeah, these have a lot, a lot. Oh, and this part has a little 
thing that opens up where you could store things inside, like a trap door. So they really did give you a ton of play value in these things. I just have to remember how these things go back together. There we go. Oh, hit the camera. Oh, close enough. Oh no. <laughs> All right. That didn't attach quite right. All right. I'm just going to leave it like that. So, yeah, that's a big toy. I guess it, had, it used to have a light in the bottom. Uh, what else do we have? So these are, so that's the big bad guy. This is the smaller version of the bad guy called Planet Remora. And according to the writing on the bag, these are prototypes, but they seem to be pretty much, oh, actually look, oh, there's another claw. That's cool. I don't, I don't think I've even ever gone through all of this stuff. So this was a neat one, a little planet, and then it had a, a double ratcheting thing so you could see all the parts. But essentially, it's just a whole bunch of projectile launchers. Again, a little part on the bottom where you could store. That was another neat thing, especially if you were as collector-focused as I was even when I was younger, is there were always places and parts in these to put all of the little bits. And then you could close it up, and they would be safe. So you didn't have to worry about losing... All of your stuff so long as everything you know fit together so yeah he gave me two of these they have like random paint smudges but they appear to be the same like I, said, I don't remember exactly and then here were some of the evil evil beast raiders or whatever they were So that is Remora. Yeah, I mean, some, some of them more than others as with the Transformer aspect and, and how they, they move. Now, again, in the show, the planets were essentially just planets, although they find out later on that, the, that each one of the planets in the cluster and some other planets actually have immense... Uh, propulsion drives in the planets and these thrusters come out of the planets and they can actually move around independent of their star system orbits and yes they have like shields and gravity wells and other stuff but um, yeah so that was kind of a cool thing in the show as well uh, here's my favorite 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 of all this stuff that will extend into the show into the characters planet ice Oh, such good characters. King Cryos, his daughter Zira. Just like one of the best, le the best noble leaders in any cartoon. Look at how cool that is, right? Yeah, the ice stuff was just so well designed. This one had, this thing came out, uh, it could open, you could put a little creature in there. So again, there's nothing in this one right now, but I'll show you all this stuff. Oh man, that's that is tight. I don't know if that's gonna open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the the physics of planets moving around outside of their orbit. Uh, well, essentially, it opens up just like the other ones. I don't think there's anything in there, but everything is in here. And yeah, there were other aspects of the show that were highly reminiscent of other sci-fi things that are out there, but you know, it's fine. Oh, this is very well taped. Canadian tape. There we go. Okay. 
yeah, so the eye stuff is just so great. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is prototype stuff because this is not the final colors, which again makes me really wish that I had mine. But this, this is just the best. So these were the, and again, imagine this was blue and black instead of bright pink, which I actually really, really love. But these were, and this is going to be important. This is for the test later. So these were the parts in the original Trendmasters toys. And again, the guys over at Mainframe, the team over at Mainframe, they took this the whole basic scheme, the names, the general ideas, and they turned it into the show and the animation. So a lot of these designs, though, actually made it into the show. So the Ice Planet had a fleet of really, really cool spaceships that looked very similar to this. And their flagship looked kind of similar to this. And look, I mean, it's a combine, combine it together. Love it. These are... Well, these are the warriors from the original toy. The, the characters did not look exactly like this in the show, but they're pretty neat. This is... Oh, this, this was the production version. The blue and clear ice on their backs. Again, this is a prototype. Um, again, there's lots and lots of different little things. These are ice mites. And those did appear in the show as well. Those are cute. Yeah, that's true. Um, sorry, the, the face is similar to how the final product looked. And again, we'll look at the action figures a little bit later. What else is in here? I think that's it. Oh, more back parts. Yeah, a whole bunch of guys. Oh, and, and then again, there were some other stuff like uh, spider tank thing, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. But yeah, ice, clearly the best, clearly the most interesting, visually dynamic. Good stuff. Uh, I want to keep that out to talk about later, but I can put these away. Who knew I had such cool stuff? War Planets slash Shadow Raiders ran for two seasons. A third was planned, but it was scrapped. After all the toys that I'm going to show you... Oh, War Planets toys. Uh, so there are other toys. I do not have them all. There were some that were released in extremely limited quantities, mainly in Canada. There are rumors that some of them came out here in the United States, but those are just rumors. Uh, so if you ever see Planet Reptazar or Planet Sand, buy it for me and I'll pay you back. Uh, the rare times these things appear on eBay, they go for many, many dollars. All right, this is the Ice Tank Cairo Spider. So they did a couple of larger crazy vehicles. Uh, there's also a Planet Beast tank that I have. I just don't know where it is and it was not in this box. Let me open this carefully. Hey, buddy, you got to go do more school. I'm not going to put all this stuff away. You can see it before I put it away, okay? Benjamin does not want to go to school when there's such fun toys. Yeah, I do not have all of the toys. Now, this one I did not have originally. So it's some sort of... They had they had a couple of toys in this line that were called tanks, like with quotation marks. And they were more like crazy vehicles that unfolded. Wow, I do not know how this works. This is the first time I've ever actually seen this toy in person. We got a spinning, <coughs> spinning base. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it wind, it winds up somehow, and then drives by itself. Well, maybe it would on a different surface. Uh, but anyway, like this one, it unfolds. Each of these turns into a foot, like that. So it can pop out and do 
stuff. There's a head in here somewhere. I don't want to, I really don't want to break any of this. Um, let's see. Well, there's some kind of head. I'm not going to try to pull it all the way out. And then a piece that goes on the top. Okay. Interesting. And it has a bunch of wheels. So yeah, somehow you wind it up and it'll drive by itself. What do these do? These open up. Okay, just hatches to put more of your stuff. Again, always good. Oh, that pops up. I don't know. Like I said, I've never actually I've never actually dug into this one before. I don't know if this was production or if this is another prototype. But it is interesting. Again, obviously it has that same Ice Planet aesthetic. Colors are different, but what are you going to do? Okay. Oh, and it came with more, more little dudes. Ooh, lots of pretty colors in this one. Oh, there's a different kind of figure in here. Let's look at that. We got Ice Mites in four different colors now. And then, huh, it's kind of neat. Little guy. Lots of tentacles. I like it. I like it. So many figures. Oh my goodness. Yeah, these were so great. I don't know that anybody ever came up with like a war game for this, but you totally could. A lot of these actually, and they do really well at standing up. Well, usually, there you go. Yeah, so you can make little units. There was a computer game <coughs> for this. <coughs> I think I think the toys came with like codes that you could go online and unlock or so, I remember something about that. And I remember it being pretty fun. I had it on on my computer at the time. Man, I wish I knew where my DVDs were. I want to I'd love to show this show to my children. I'll find it. It's in my catalog. It was animation number 49 or something. Oh, air raiders. Don't get me started on air raiders. Okay, put that away. Alright, what's next? Oh, this bag is also missing Planet Tech, which I have somewhere. Shoot. So it wasn't all just planets, we also had moons. So moons were basically smaller planets, smaller price points. But the gimmick was, hey, you've got this cool little moon. Um, some of these opened up, but obviously there's not that much going on with it. But it came with a bunch of attachments. So you could attach these things to the planets. And then they could be friends, they could help out, they could fight. So it gave you a chance to really expand your your play. They also had a, like, more of these bendy bendy things with blasters at the end of it, or again, more connection points, so you could connect all these things to other things. In the show, the moons were very important. Um, that's where a lot of the, the heavy-duty weapons were to fend off the beast. So that is a rock moon this looks like a bone moon this is definitely a prototype we've got some really wacky colors or just completely uncolored this is some kind of a vehicle that came with one of these sets i do not know but it is interesting wheels Again, same, they reuse these molds all the time, but with different colors. <laughs> Rock moon. And yeah, all these little bendy parts. Ooh, that's gross plastic. <laughs> yeah, bendy, bendy plastic does not usually age very well. Apparently the, the note here says this was bone moon omega. 
I trust that that is correct. And then, let's see, we've got more moons, more rock moons. Those are cool. Man, one day, I do have a shelf in mind where these are all going to go. And I'll have all the planets open and everything inter intertwined and all the little armies out. That'll be pretty sweet. Let's see, this is... Oh, the heroic tech supermoon. So yeah, there was a tech planet. Again, I have the toy somewhere. Um, I'll have to show you somewhere sometime when I find it. But like this one was really, really weird. It was like a figure that attached to a little moon. Lots and lots of parts. I don't know how this all works, but it's very interesting. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's like a puzzle. Oh, let me show you a little tech, guys. Pretty cool robots. It actually looks like it looks like Sauron from Captain Power a little bit. At least it gives me that. 20 years later. Yes. Uh, I did not watch much of Andromeda. I know I know of it. I know I, I saw a little bit, but it wasn't wasn't exactly my jam. Oh, and then the tech also had these cool walkers. Look at that, look at that. Just classic walker design. Isn't that cool? Got the little grasper arm and the blaster arm. Love that. And the actual design of the Planet Tech toy, they completely reused in the show as a little floating creature, a little helper robot. That was neat. And then the last bag in here is like a bunch of just random prototype stuff. So we got another vehicle thing. Oh, here's another moon. More parts that came with other. Oh, the Magog World Ship. Yeah, I'd have to go back and, and look at the uh, Andromeda stuff. I don't really remember it very well. I remember what the, the ship looked like. Bunch of little dudes. Yeah, a lot of this is crazy prototype stuff. What's in here? It's a mystery. Oh, this was from a ice moon toy. Again, a weird creature design that could sit on top of it. And again, the guy that sent me all this, or I, I know, I know, I paid him money for at least some of this, but I would hear from him randomly every, about maybe like once a year. Just randomly get an email saying. Hey, how's it going? How's your collection? Blah blah blah. Like asking me all these detailed questions. And I'm like, oh, it's you know, it's going well. Blah blah blah. And then he'd say, oh, I just found this piece. You know, are you interested in this? So the last thing that I had heard from him, and again, this goes back a few years, but he had unearthed another treasure trove of prototypes. And again, where this guy found all this stuff, I don't know. I know he was in contact with people who used to work at the company. Like I said, at one point at least, he was you know staking out their uh their property and digging things out of their trash and it's all crazy but he got in touch with me and he let me know he had extras of a whole bunch of stuff just the little dudes so these were i don't even know what these were from uh, like a, some kind of a water planet i don't know if it ever actually came out and again like these are pretty simple little plastic figures but they put a lot of work into making these things, the different planets, pretty unique in their designs. And there's a lot of detail on these little guys. So a bunch of these water things. And these little fire guys. Oh, and planet fire. There's no planet fire in this box. And I have a planet fire. Okay, clearly, I'm going to be doing a part two of this. 
whenever I find the rest of my planets. So again, Fire Dudes, prototype version, unpainted. And these are not how the characters looked from Planet Fire in the show, which we will get to in a moment. And again, they're actually like some different sculpts, which is cool. And then probably the prize of what he sent, of all the stuff that what he sent me, is that these are the only thing I have from planet, from the sand planet. Sand planet had two different kinds of creatures living on it. So these were one of the creatures. Pretty gnarly. And these are, these are definitely prototypes. They're hand painted. They have other colors from wherever they were in the process. They are slightly tacky, which I don't like. Uh, here's one with a blaster. Yeah, I do not have Planet Sand. Like I said, if you ever see that somewhere, buy it and I'll pay you back. But that, that guy's cool. Look at that. And then the only thing, again, I have from Planet Reptazar. If you see Planet Reptazar, buy it, I'll pay you back. Uh, look at this. How cool is that? It's a little dino guy riding another dino guy with guns. I mean, come on. It doesn't get any better than that. Planet Reptazar did appear in the, the very last episode of the show, and it just got destroyed as soon as you saw it. There might have been survivors that would have featured in season three. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's almost a dino rider. It's a dino on a dino. Uh, there is articulation on this little guy. I don't want to move it because I don't know how well it's attached. But yeah, that is that is cool. Move that to the side. So Treadmaster made all these toys. Mainframe said, yeah, let's make a show out of this. And they did. So what did the characters look like in the show? What toys did we get from that? Well, here we go. So this is the main hero, Graveheart. So these are roughly three and three quarter, four inch figures. Uh, they came single packed, blister cards. Each came with a bunch of accessories. A lot, of, a lot of gimmicky stuff. They are fairly simple as far as articulation. They're pretty much... Some of them are six point of articulation. It's about that. Uh, but yeah, a bunch of stuff it came with. So this guy, Graveheart, the main hero. He came with a an armor piece that fit over his head and his torso. Um, I did not have that on display. I know I have it somewhere. And then two guns... One that just popped over his arm like so. Heavily armed miner. That's right. Yeah. Graveheart was a natural born leader. Ends up leading the entire alliance. But would constantly, like even multiple times per episode, tell people, I I'm just a miner. I can't do that. No, Graveheart. You're a leader. Uh, so classic five points of articulation. But he does have a waist. So that gives him six. Haha. <laughs> Take that, Kenner. And because he is from, he does have, he's got a rocky texture to him a little bit, not too bad. He does have slightly translucent hair, so you could get a light piping effect if there was a light at the right angle behind him. It might pipe through his head a little bit. Details like the necklace from the show. And this is close to how he looked in the show. He wasn't quite so skinny or or bow-legged as far as I remember. And again, like this just ridiculously oversized projectile launching blaster for his other hand. I think that it has two handles, so you can sort of hold it. You can en envision him holding it like that, but his hands are so far apart and have no posability that moves inward. It's useless to have two handles. But hey, they're there. For some reason. Uh, as typical, they have holes in their feet, but they didn't come with any bases. So if you had something you wanted to use with it, you could. Uh, it's it's a little tacky, which bothers me. But 
what are you gonna do? All right, so we have Graveheart, our hero. We have his friend, sometimes romantic partner, Jade. Very cool character in the show. She kicks a lot of ass. Again, kind of a weird pose to the toy, especially, <laughs> I mean, it's a thing. Ozai, we talk we talk about Robotech a lot on, on this show and other ones, but uh, but yes, it it will come up again, I'm sure soon. Uh, this this figure came with a giant gun thing, uh, which partly explained her pose and how she would hold on to it, but it's it's in a drawer somewhere. But again, same thing, like not not a bad sculpt at all. Pretty good likeness of, of how the character looked, as far as the face and the hair, especially. Translucent part for the hair, so if there was a light, you know, it would shine through. Yeah, again, looking back on these, I'm pretty pleased with how they how they look. And yes, they went with sort of stylized poses. They're not just, you know, standing still. You can give them credit for what they what they tried to do with these. Oh, don't like the way they feel. All right, Fire Planet. So we saw these goofy-looking crustacean-like things. Well, here's how they looked in the show. This is Prince Pyrus, hero of Planet Fire. He's just a kid, but he's got to take command. He's got a Grand Vizier who sometimes gives him terrible advice. So he has this weird lance thing that has it's spring-loaded. For some reason, couldn't really hold it super well. I love the shield though. And again, with the a really good likeness. Lots and lots of sculpted detail on that face. Oh, but the paint just doesn't not show it off. All the striations, all that texture. Oh yeah. Colors are really accurate to the animation too, which is nice. You don't always you don't always get that. Uh, bad guys. So here are so the Beast Planet. Right, he's he's not a miner. He's a miner. Uh, yes, and he's always oh I'm I'm not too young. I can do it. So these are the generic troopers the, for the Beast. I forget exactly what they're called. There was some name for him. This, I, ah, man, look at how cool this design is. Just fantastic. This one, too, had a, had a blaster that fit inside these, like, claw hand things. Just look at the claws on the feet. This is great. Removable red spines on the back. If you press that button in the middle, he pops apart into pieces. Uh, I'm not going to do it now, though, because it's old. But yeah, that is a super neat toy. There were a couple of odd leaders for Planet Beast, and they added some more as the show went on. But the most memorable one, of course, is Block. Looks like a really vicious dude with all these claws and spikes. Of course, constantly is fumbling everything in the show. Yeah, even, right, exactly. Evil, this is evil, this is the bad guy. Uh, the most interesting gimmick with this guy is that he he had he was mostly translucent and like a it looked like a star field inside of his body and then inside his head is a floating skull and it would vibrate and and uh, when he was freaking out which of course he always did being an inept bad guy uh, I don't think this one actually moves in his head but you can see that they have a, a skull piece in there. The claws are removable. They sort of they plug into the back of the hand. Again, without any arm articulation other than up and down, he looks a little goofy, but he's pretty menacing. And he's all he is all translucent. It's kind of hard to tell, but so again, if you have a light behind this, it would look pretty neat. 
And of course, I save the best for last, my favorite, King Cryos himself. And again, just comes with a bunch of stuff. So this is what the Ice Planet people look like. Although there are, there are variations. So the, the, royal, the royal Ice people are much more humanoid. They have some others that are a little bit more monstrous. Okay, I'll admit. The toy, he's got a little bit of a goofy eyeball thing going on. He looked much more regal in the show. But this is the basic style of their characters. He's got a gigantic gun. He's got a little gun. He's got an ice shield. Uh, if you look closely in the animation, they did not replicate it here, but the ice people have another set of arms that they usually have folded into their back or against their back, which is kind of cool. They use it when they need to. They've got weird toes, and that is Cryos. Really good character. They got a, I don't I don't know the names of any of the voice actors in the show. I know they they were very prolific in the '90s. But the voices were also really good. So you remember what I was talking about with the spaceships? This one in particular. Uh, Blade Wing, they called this. So again, this was the this was the original design from the original Trendmasters toy. When they went to make the show, this is exactly how it looked for the, the Ice Planet fighters. And they even replicated it, kind of, in a toy. So this is one of a couple of vehicle toys they made. It's the only one I have. Um, it's by, Now, obviously, it is completely not to scale. In the show, these, these fighters can hold... I mean, the, the, the cockpit area is like a whole... Uh, hold it's like a little you could hold fit like 10 people in there uh this one he just kind of hangs out cryos kind of hangs out on the top but it can fit a figure it has movable wings to serve as skids it has landing gear in the front projectiles on the sides and this is notable to me especially because not only do i love the design and i like the ice planet characters but this was one of the first toys i ever bought on ebay so this toy came out in 1998, and I believe that is when I bought it from a seller in Canada on eBay, which is kind of cool. I remember I was at UCLA. I think I was using the computer at my job in the shipping department and buying stuff on eBay. <laughs> So we had the standard action figure line and a couple of vehicles. Like I said, there were there were some other ones. There was a little rock, Planet Rock tank that I think came with another copy of, uh, of Graveheart here. I don't know if there was an evil, if there was a Beast Planet vehicle or not. Who knows? And then, improper use of facilities. Well, it was, look, it was a job and they, they, didn't, they didn't mind. So we had the small action figure line. And of course, you got to go big. We had an oversized figure line. About 12 inches tall, so one sixth scale. Proportions, not quite right, but not the worst. Removable helmet. It's got a Got a bit of a googly eye thing going on, but otherwise, solid head sculpt. Again, with the translucent hair. Let's see. Let's see if the electronics still work. Lock and load. Lock and load. Let the beast beware. Let the beast beware. Lock and load. Oh, I guess that's it. Oh man, it was. It, I figured it would be a shoe in for him to say, "I'm just a miner." So articulated decently enough for a toy like this. Now, in modern day times, most 12-inch figures that are made for kids are solid plastic. They're pretty heavy. These are really flimsy. 
they're hollow a lot of hollow parts uh again yeah they do have the voice chip but otherwise man this thing feels like it could just break apart in my hands and this is production it's not like a prototype or anything uh some interesting articulation though we have articulated fingers and a separately articulated pointer finger which is kind of cool Ooh, a little bit like the, I believe you pronounce it Zydekix. I think I read that somewhere. But yeah, that's true. Yeah, like sort of bug-ish people with a lot of spiny parts. Uh, and then this is some sort of complicated pop-out, goofy something. I don't know. It, there's a spring in here somewhere or multiple springs. Oh, and then it, oh. Oh, action figure, baby. Yes. So good. Although, man, if my commander had eyeballs that were as pointed in different directions as this guy, I don't know if I'd want him shooting anything. All right, so we've got Graveheart, the main hero. Oh, 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 it's gross. Oh, it's gross. Ugh. So sticky. Okay, he's not standing up for some reason. We've got the kid himself. So again, with like a weird spring-loaded staff. Just kind of works, not really. Uh, shield that just fell off. Oh, it is so sticky. Yuck. And then, uh, he also has an action figure feature. Oh, all right. Let's let's hear what he has to say. Finally, some action. Action sounds. <laughs> and we've been burned. Oh, and finally some action. he had four sounds. But again, like. This one has even better articulation. He can actually do quite a bit. Ball jointed, eh, mostly ball jointed shoulder on this side, just up and down. Again, all controlled by the trigger. So yeah, you get this guy to do some, some fun stuff. Again, quite good head sculpt. Really does look like the character. Back into some semblance of a stand-in. Right, I'll put him away later. Yeah, the shield attaches to the holes in his forearm. Oh, I don't like the way that feels. And then, dun, 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 check it out. Oh, yeah. So we have block, supersized. Let's see what he does. Destroy and conquer. Destroy and conquer. He had a really weird accent. Blast him. Attack! Attack. Destroy and conquer. Cool. Let's see, what is his what does his action feature do? Oh. Yes. Attack! <laughs> he barely lifts his arms up. To be fair, they're very heavy. Destroy and conquer. That's about it. He really does look like a larger version of his little action figure. Same same style, removable claws for his hands. Oh, it's so gummy. But again, a lot more articulation in these big ones. Let me introduce some. Cool. Well, some more articulation anyway. Actual knees. So, yeah. Now, if you like, I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but in, there is the same style of, there's like a floating skull in his head, and this one is actually on a spring. Oh, there you can see it. So it jiggles. Oh, it's so good. Jiggly skull. Oh, I love that. 
And again, the show, his his skull inside his head would just jiggle around incessantly. And at one point, one of the characters even called him on it. And said, stop that, you know, stop that jiggling. And then, it st- and then it stayed still. So he could control it at least a little bit. Ah, that's cool. So yeah, that is... Oh, I'm sorry. There's one other thing. How could I forget? Well, I forgot because I put it on the other side of the table. So not only did we get King Cryos in a single release, we got an Ice Planet Blade Wing that came with another King Cryos, but they weren't done with the Ice Planet because they knew they knew Ice Planet was the best planet. The final thing I have to show today, which again, I don't really have enough room because the camera's too close, but... The ice tank. Look at this thing. It has six super articulated legs that move in a bunch of different ways. Two grabby claws. Again, each with just a bunch of articulation. Two projectile firing cannons. Another cannon for decoration. Oh, I just knocked off. The antenna, that's fine. Antenna, action. And this opens up. Oh, it used to open up. There we go. Look at that. It opens up and there's still a cool hatch inside. And you open up that hatch. A figure can sort of stand in there. It's got controls. This toy is fantastic. And there's a really famous scene in the show... Uh, it, actually, the show starts, well, it starts off with planet tech being eaten by the beast planet in another solar system. Uh, there's one survivor. She heads into the cluster to warn them. Uh, and then it goes to planet ice where Graveheart is a bunch of, is with a bunch of miners who are stealing ice from planet ice to provide water to their people. Uh, they're attacked. Cryos shows up in one of these. And yeah, he pops up out of the top of this to talk to them. Very iconic. Uh, and it's super cool. Yeah, the Adeptus Mechanicus. It does look like something they might have uh, they might have come up with. But yeah, of course, if it's Planet Ice, I had to get it. That's great. Like I said, it's a little bit too big to be able to show easily with the way my camera's set up. But it's a cool toy. I will show you. I don't know. I wonder if it's if the show is streaming anywhere. If there's a way to watch it online. I mean, I'm sure there's. It's probably on. It's probably on YouTube. Uh, War planets. So I'll just show you real quick. So again, from this original toy design, that's how the sh- the spaceship looked in the animation. So clearly, they took that and made it work it's super cool ship on the show uh, one of the battle moons the blade wing or the yeah ice skiff blade wing they give you all the schematics and stuff so again the the scale here compared to an ice planet person and eh, not quite in scale still looks good though yeah oh there he is on the tank Haha. <laughs> Don't shoot. Oh, there's Block with his floaty skull. Close up. Nice planet. Yeah, there's the front of the ship with the little blade wing. Exit in. Another ship. Oh, yeah, there's the tank in action. He's just a miner. Doesn't look like, oh, it's not available for streaming outside of YouTube bootlegs. That's annoying. Yeah, Yeah, like I said, (laughs) according to my DVD catalog, I do own it. I just, I, for the life of me, I don't know where I put it. And I think I had the complete collection. Oh, man. I'll have to hunt that down. Because I definitely want to show it to my kids, especially Benjamin, at some point here. Shoot. Maybe we'll have to start a letter campaign. Bring us 
War planets. Or Shadow Raiders, depending on what country you're in and your rules for naming things for children. Uh, well, like I said, there will be a part two to this episode because somewhere I have a box that includes planet the planet tech toy, the planet the fire planet toy, the beast tank that transforms into a giant robotic scorpion. So at least those three things, if not, if not more. Wow. Wow, I really cannot. It's around here somewhere. It's around here somewhere, folks. I will find it. So we will eventually be back with more War Planets. Uh, you don't need to bug me about it, but it'll happen. And now I got to put all this stuff away. I know not all of you were familiar with this property beforehand, but I hope you enjoyed seeing some some new things. Maybe something you weren't familiar with. Maybe did th did this for those of you who didn't know War Planets or Shadow Raiders. Did this jog your memory at all? Were you like, oh, I do remember seeing that once upon a time in the late '90s or on a dusty toy shelf one day? I'm always interested for people with those those sort of uh, experiences. Like, oh, I, now I I remember seeing that once. I never knew what it was from. I never saw the show, but I saw a toy somewhere. That's always cool. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Yeah, and like I said, there were there were other toys that were released in just very small quantities. Planet Reptizar, Planet Sand, Planet Water. Oh, those are the three. Okay, folks, keep your eyes up. Whatever the price. There was a bone tank. I don't have that one either. Yeah, I have the beast tank and the ice tank and all the figures. One day. One day I'll hunt them down. I don't, Like I said, the, the last time I looked, they were so expensive. Oh, there's a planet water on eBay you know, for how many hundreds of dollars. You would see Reptazars. I think out of the out of those final three, I think Reptazar was the most produced, at least. Yeah, I seriously, the show was great. The animation does it hold up now? And eh, not, I'm sure, not super well. It's not. I don't remember it being nearly as clunky as Beast Wars. And I know a lot of you love Beast Wars. That's fine. But dear God, the animation of that is rough. Like I, said, I remember War Planets being at least a step a step better than uh, than that was. But yeah, I'd, I'd watch it again for sure. All right. Let's see. Is anybody online right now? Come on, raid menu. I can't be wrong. I'm the host here. I have to be right at all times. Oh, my raid menu is showing me all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah, Feeder, we talked about it at the beginning. So, yeah, Reboot was first, then Beast Wars, then this show. And then, uh, you know, they... They were stuck around for a little while. They did some other shows as well before. It was one of those things like it, they that company got bought and sold and blah, 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 blah. Oh, my response to people who love Beast Wars. Yeah. Well, look. Hey. I I Look, I admit there, there are a lot of Beast Wars fans out there. A lot of them were kids at the time. So I give them, <laughs> I give them a little uh, leeway for... No, no. It's... Beast Wars was, it had really cool ideas, especially when it started getting into the, like, actually crossing over the different universes, which which was really interesting as far as, like, an evolution of where Transformers was going. But yeah, I just, I, I, was, I was just not at the right age to appreciate the silliness of that show at the time. Yeah, Fader, exactly. And uh, yeah, I think... I think looking back, some of the their yeah their best work has to do with how they tackled what they could do at the time, 
And yeah, what they did with those limitations, how they pushed against those limitations, and yeah, because like I I remember looking back at things and and being like, oh, like reboot, yeah, even though that was the first one, like it had its it had its really distinctive look to it. I really remember the show looking cool, not, but then yeah, like Beast Wars just. I think it's because they had they had so many of the animals that just did not look right with that with what they could do with animation at the time. That's probably it. Cuz even Beast Machines, which now here's a hot take. I liked aspects of Beast Machines. I'm not going to say I love the show, but I thought some of the stuff that they did in that show was pretty cool. And in that one they weren't yes, they were animals, but they were like mechanical cybernetic animals. So it wasn't so much of, oh, this is a giant rat that does not move or have, you know, the movement of it and the fur does not look anything like a real living creature, which is the prob- some of the problems that the animation came into with Beast Wars. But it's all, that's all ancient, ancient history. And yeah, mainframe is still around, but yeah, it's gone back and forth through a couple of, Different companies, it looks like. It's a mecha rat. We love mecha rats. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not rating because my my thing's being a little glitchy. Anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in, checking out Beast Wars, or Beast Wars, <laughs> checking out War Planets Shadow Raiders, <clears throat> whatever it was in your local <clears throat> your local area. And remember, I'm just a miner. See everybody tomorrow for Warhammer Wednesday and Myths and Video Games with Pete Wiz tomorrow afternoon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.